Okay, so this material is going to cover uh, some basic information about setting up a transparency map and Rhino using, utilizing VRAN. Okay, so the first thing, I, I've already set up my environment. I have a ground plane, uh, the infinite ground plane selection, and I've set that on a separate layer and locked that geometry as well. So I have a horizon and all of my uh, rendering that I'm going to be producing here. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, essentially what we're going to be doing is creating a transparency map. So I need to build that material. Um, so I'm going to go in here and I am going to start with my sort of standard guy here. I'm just going to duplicate that. And I'm going to be creating a transparency pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and click the transparency map here. And the way I'm going to do this is I've set this up uh, as a bitmap utilizing uh, the uh, a raster beta program online. So we'll go ahead and I'll show you here the file. My desktop. And so I took uh, an image and raster beta is a really nice website. Um, it's a free service. You guys can create sort of these um, panelized systems similar to the Herzog Engineering Project at the De Young Museum in um, San Francisco. So this is the image I'm going to be using. Um, black is going to be transparent, obviously, in the, for the perforations, and white is going to be the actual screen here uh, that we're going to be producing. I'll go ahead and minimize that. So I need to go ahead and find my file, which is obviously I saved that on my desktop. All right, so I'll update that. So we can see that in there. And I, what that rasterization does is takes the um, image files and translates them. Okay, so we'll go ahead and hit apply and hit update. Uh, and you'll note that we actually, if we're looking at this, um, it's done the solids there as transparent and transparent and solid. So we need to invert that. Um, under the settings here, we can go ahead and uh, just click invert and update that so that it's gone ahead and done that. And different softwares interpret the uh, black and white differently. Uh, in this case, black is obviously solid. So I'd apply and we can update that. Okay. So now we have a particular material here. I'm going to go ahead and this up and I need to get some information about this so I can actually size this appropriately. Uh, so we go to image size, we can get the general proportions of this. This is a 24 by 11 um, in terms of our geometry. So we want this to actually maintain that connectivity. We can go ahead and uh, do that intelligently. So I'll go ahead and set that out. I'm going to go ahead in my front view and create a planar surface. I'll go 24 by 11. Now this is proportioned according to uh, what my size requirements are. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy this back so we can have a sort of backdrop that we can see as we go through this. Make this bigger. And I'm going to go ahead and if I pull my material map, I can right click and apply that material to the object. Let's see what happens here. You can see very easily that we've got the, all that information sort of mapped onto here. Zoom in a little bit. And we can also start to get into the, the V-Ray material. Uh, I want this to be gray, so I'm going to set this to be white. So we update that. Uh, you can also start to play around with this if you want to build a material that has a uh, core 10 steel or, or something like that. We can go ahead um, and apply a coloring bitmap to that that's really basic and, uh, and easy to apply. Okay, so let's go ahead and just render that out. We have our nice white screen here. And you can see the shadows getting cast through the light and, uh, and everything is penetrating through. And so it's just a really easy way to, to set that up. Now, if we decide that we want to adjust that, we can also come in here uh, and say you wanted to tile a particular panel. Uh, sorry, we can go into texture mapping, add We'll go ahead and add a planer here. Show that guy. I'm going to go ahead and grab the mapping widget. And I'm going to rotate him in place. And let's scroll down, let's check out, make sure all this is set up. So X is actually in the X and Y is actually in the Y. And so I'm going to go ahead and set this to fill something 11 by 12. Okay. And we can go ahead and 
grab this and drag it into the location. Just want to make sure that that actually orients properly with our surface. So now we got it sitting on the corner here. And you can see how that's looking. All right, and so then we're going to go ahead and if we hit render again, you can now see that this is tiled twice on the geometry. Okay, so just really easy ways of starting to set up some really basic uh, fundamentals for the rendering purposes.